So my adventures with Superman is back for its second season and I'm having a great time with it. I was a huge fan of the first season with its animation and character work. It has some of my favorite depictions of Clark Kent and Lois Lane ever made and it has such a unique identity to it, pulling more from Japanese anime styles and tropes that set it apart from a lot of other animated superhero shows. And it's done wonders for the reputation of Superman. For years, basically everybody thought Superman was boring, but now in part thanks to the show, it feels like that's starting to change. And it does a great job of showcasing the key to a truly great Superman story. The most important thing you could ever get right. Without it, your show is basically worthless, and that is a talking gorilla. The DC Universe is nothing without its monkeys. The Superman suit doesn't really have much room for pockets, so when Clark does that Sailor Moon transition into his costume, he needs a wallet that's slim and can hold all of his things, which is where today's sponsor Ridge Wallet can help. Ridge is making everyday carry easier with their wallets and key cases, letting you keep all your necessities without any of the bulk. Their wallets come in over 50 styles with premium materials like titanium, stainless steel, and leather. They're fully customizable with accessories like cash straps and air tag holders and even swappable outer plates. They can hold up to 12 cards and are fully RFID blocking to keep your information safe and secure. And if you don't love it after 99 days, you can send it back with no questions asked. Asked. And with Father's Day right around the corner, Ridge is making gift giving even easier with up to 40% off across their website. They sent me their burnt titanium collection, which I think is just gorgeous. It's made out of real titanium and that material does this thing where when it gets heated, it creates this really cool gradient like to blue and it's just gorgeous on these wallets. They also sent me their burnt titanium key case to match, which holds up to six keys without any of the extra bulk or jingling. And together they look super cool. Check the link in the description to get up to 40% off your Ridge wallet right in time for Father's Day. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video and thanks to my patrons who are able to get all my videos early and ad free for just one dollar a month. I've also left donation links down below for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. It's a cause that I've been really passionate about but realized I haven't really done much using the platform here on YouTube and I wanted to change that. So please consider donating if you're able to and back to the video. Now I really love the first season back when it came out. It's a show that from the beginning was clearly made with a lot of love and passion for the Superman mythos. I never thought I'd see a reference to electric blue Superman in an adaptation on this side of the 21st century but holy shit it's the coolest. And it does all of this while still having an identity of its own. It's not just trying to perfectly adapt the comics or anything but it's taking ideas and concepts that we're familiar with with and putting them in this new interesting package. I really love the slow burn that they did with Clark and learning about Krypton. It reminds me a lot of the early days of Smallville in all the best possible ways. We're being drip fed information that on paper we should already know, but because of the changes that they're making, the mystery of it all is still really compelling. I didn't think it was perfect though. I think the villains were a little bit underwhelming. It was weird to have every single Superman rogue just be somebody in a tech suit. I get what they were going for, but honestly how they did Parasite was a bit too much for me. I wasn't the biggest fan of tying multiverse related stuff into such important landmarks for Superman's early career. And I'm not sure how I feel about the design for Zod and Brainiac. A lot of their intergang was made up of various Flash villains when a Superman rogue could have fit there no problem. Like, I really don't get why they used Deathstroke instead of someone like Bloodsport who could have easily fit the bill in the same way. Speaking of Deathstroke, I'm sorry, I still can't get used to Chris Parnell as the voice. It throws me off every time. I can't not hear Jerry. A lot of this is because, for some reason, the showrunners had restrictions on what characters they were allowed to use. The prime example being Lex Luthor. Back during season one, producer Brian Clogger was told that they weren't allowed to use Superman's most iconic villain, which is why when he showed up in season one, he just went by Alex as a way of skirting around that. Which honestly, huge fan of the ask for forgiveness, not permission approach. We need more of that. And a lot of my complaints look like they're being fixed a bit more so far in season two, with us seeing more Superman villains like Atomic Skull, introducing Supergirl into the mix. And now we're able to see the rise to power of this younger Lex Luthor. But where the show really shines is in its characters and their relationships. This version of Clark is probably one of my favorite interpretations of the character ever. Now, there's no definitive take on what Superman is because, uh... You know, he's not real. Everything about superheroes and these kinds of characters is subjective and up to writer's interpretations, and I think that's part of what makes the comics medium so special. But if you ask me, Superman is at his best when he's portrayed as a truly and genuinely kind person. Not someone who's framed as perfect or better than us, but a gentle soul who finds balance between his Earth identity and his Kryptonian identity and does what he can to help people just because it's right. Which is exactly what this show is doing. This Clark, for all intents and purposes, is just a regular person. We see his anxieties and his fears. The entire first episode of season two, he's worried about what to do with Lois for Valentine's Day. Other Superman media has has of course done this before, Superman and Lois being a great example, but this show is really able to go even more relatable and even more quote unquote human with his personality and I think that's why he's so likable. There's an interview with Grant Morrison, the writer of All-Star Superman, where they talk about how Superman's problems are the same as everybody else's, but just bigger. When Superman walks the dog, he walks around the solar system. When his relatives visit, they come from the future and bring a big monster with them. It's the same things that you or me struggle with on a daily basis, but on this Paul Bunyan level scale. Honestly, Grant Morrison is just chock full of good quotes about Superman. There's this really good one where they talked about when they were working on All-Star with Frank Whiteley, they ran randomly ran into someone who was just wearing a Superman costume, just like hanging out. They were having a lot of trouble in like the best way to present Superman in the art and this random guy's physicality, like the way he was just so relaxed and natural, everything clicked for them. Superman is someone with so much 
strength and power that of course he wouldn't be flexing or have any tension. He would be fully relaxed. And that interaction inspired the iconic cover for All-Star. I like how I just said that Superman isn't real and then followed it up with an interview that like 100% proves he's a real person. It's like the same thing with John Constantine where like anybody who's written for Hellblazer has like a story where they met John Constantine and I think that's crazy. It's my favorite part about the costume reveal for the James Gunn movie. I'm not in love with that design or anything. It's basically the Fortnite design and you know I hate that color, but his pose gives me that same energy that he's just a regular guy going off to work. And I feel the same way about Clark in my adventures with Superman. Honestly, after the show, the new movie has a lot of really big shoes to fill, but it's not just Clark. The entire main cast is phenomenal in the show. I'm so glad Jimmy Olsen is getting a spotlight here. He's the heart and soul of a lot of Superman stories. And I love their dynamic and the best friend angle that they're doing here. And they managed to do the impossible. They somehow made a character, a quote unquote content creator without it being the most annoying thing in the world. Genuinely, this is groundbreaking everybody. I don't, I think we need to be making a bigger deal out of this. But Lois Lane, especially, I absolutely love the way they're handling her character. They just nail her spunkiness, her energy, and the dynamic between her and Clark. The love story between the two of them is so special. They have such great chemistry. I would watch an entire show with none of the superhero shit, and it's just the two of them getting into hijinks. Also, all of that, like, discourse about her last season was just so fucking annoying. I understand how some people could be tired of secret identity drama, but I actually really enjoy it. To me, it's a necessary part of these stories, and I always hate how it's just glossed over lately. You could say that it's overdone, but it feels like we barely see that sort of thing anymore. Most superheroes just totally drop the secret identity aspect, and I think that's kind of a shame. Like, I thought the reason we liked X-Men 97 so much was because it leaned so much more into the soap opera bullshit that's so present in the source material. And Lois Lane jumping off a building to prove a point is textbook Lois Lane, and I'm so glad they made a joke about it this season instead of letting the criticism get to them and backpedaling. The unfortunate reality is that there's a massive amount of misogyny in superhero fandoms. Female characters get bombarded with hate for doing things that nobody would bat an eye for if a man did it, but that's a whole other can of worms. We, we, don't, we don't have time for that. This is a show that lives and breathes off of its characters. And I think Superman desperately needed something like that after so many years of having a bit of a difficult reputation. I feel like a bit of a broken record at this point when I say that for decades, a lot of comic fans and general audiences alike have felt like Superman is boring. I think I've literally mentioned it in every single one of my Superman videos. Jesus Christ, I need new material. But it's true, for the longest time, Superman has had kind of a reputation problem. Ask even the most diehard Superman fan and they'll tell you that they used to have an edgy phase where they hated on the guy or thought he was only cool if he was evil. And I don't judge anybody for that. I was literally one of those people. And there are, of course, different opinions and people can just have different preferences and that's totally cool. Nothing wrong with that. But I do think that a lot of that mindset mainly comes from just misinformation or misunderstandings of what makes Superman work. Now, you could say that this is because of the core concept of the character, how he's so powerful that there are no stakes for the stories and he's not interesting. But I think stories are worth more than just fight scenes and power scaling in general is kind of a limiting way to view characters and art. But even then, nobody seems to have that same issue with similarly quote unquote OP characters like Goku or Kratos or even The Flash. You could say people think he's boring because of the 1978 Richard Donner movie. And while I don't think that movie is perfect or anything, it certainly didn't do any favors in the power level sense with the guy literally turning back time by spinning the earth around a bunch. I think that the sheer charm of that movie, the visual effects at the time, as well as Christopher Reeve's electrifying performance as Superman, elevated a lot more than people give it credit for, especially given how successful that movie was. I know it's not like a hot take or anything, but he's genuinely just like so likable and perfect in that role. There's a reason for years everybody's been trying to recapture that same charisma, for better or for worse. And you could also say that Zack Snyder is the reason people didn't like Superman. The DCEU in general was just a mess overall, and I think that started back in Man of Steel with how it handled the fundamentals of the character, but I don't think that movie specifically is the reason for his reputation. If anything, I'd say those movies were made in direct response to the Superman is boring argument and tried to counter that. I just don't think they did the best job with it. For some people it worked and some people it didn't, but I think it accidentally ended up confirming those beliefs for a lot of people, that Superman is nothing more than an angry, stoic boy scout. But I do actually think that there is one specific piece of Superman history that we can pinpoint as being the origins for a lot of this misconception. Just like all of our problems today, it all goes back to Ronald Reagan. I'm kidding. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm kind of kidding. You, you, you'll, you'll see it. Hear me out. In 1985, DC released Crisis on Infinite Earths, which kickstarted an entire universe-wide reboot of their entire comic line, and it set the standard for the company to do it again like 20 more times. And part of this reboot initiative was to create new origins for all their iconic characters, spruce things up a bit, and modernize those golden age stories to make things more accessible to new readers. So in 1986, they released The Man of Steel, written and illustrated by John Byrne, that he followed up with a multi-year-long run on the character. And I 
really don't like this comic. If you like it, that's all good. I know there are plenty of people who do. It's considered a classic. DC literally slaps it all over their branding and recommended comics, even on the trailer for My Adventures with Superman. There's a lot of iconography involved, and at the time, it simplified 50 years of comics into one easy to read package. But if you ask me, nowadays, by today's standards, I think it's far from the best origin story for Superman and definitely far from the best introduction to the character. I made a whole video on comics that I recommend if you want to check that out after this one. The initial miniseries is effectively just a streamlined version of his Golden Age origins, like basically the 1978 movie turned into a comic but I think it misses a lot of what makes the Golden Age and the Donner movie so special. There's been a lot of discourse about how John Byrne's Superman run kept both Jonathan and Martha Kent alive, and I don't really have a ton of opinions on that aspect. I prefer Jonathan dying of a heart attack and what it says for Clark's character, but at the same time, it's not the biggest deal in the world for me. But the Golden Age of Superman leaned really heavily into this idea that Superman was the champion of the oppressed. His first appearance is literally him fighting scummy landlords and abusive husbands, and it was a defining aspect for those early stories, which completely got erased with Byrne's rebooted origin. And on top of that, my biggest issue with Byrne's run is how it handles Clark's relationship with his Kryptonian heritage. John Byrne is credited a lot for humanizing Superman in a similar way to how I talked about it before, but I think he went a little bit too far in the opposite direction with it. Because when Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel created the character, they heavily drew from their own backgrounds as Jewish immigrants in the 1930s, with Krypton meant to directly represent that culture. Superman's balance between his alien identity and his human identity was a direct allegory for their own lives and the lives of so many other immigrants. They were stories that were meant to give hope and empower people like them during the darkest time in human history. It's thankfully an idea that started to come back again in more modern stories like Smashes the Clan and Birthright, but a major aspect of Byrne's run is Clark effectively ignoring his Kryptonian heritage and choosing Earth. Literally the final page of this origin story, the one that the whole DC company says is the best place to start, has Superman essentially saying, yeah, I'm from Krypton, but I don't really care. I'm an American through and through, which not only removes a lot of the interesting nuance about Superman's character and how he balances these two worlds, it is absolutely fucking wild when you view it through that allegorical lens. With this and a lot of other decisions throughout the run, Byrne really popularized the idea of truth, justice, and the American American way, and cemented Superman as the American superhero in the era of 1980s Ronald Reaganism politics. Even more so than the guy that's literally wearing the American flag on his head. Which is crazy, because John Byrne is from Canada. The American Way motto didn't come from this run. It's originally from the 1940s radio serials. The phrase came back in the 1950s George Reeves series, but Superman himself never said it until the 1978 movie. But even then, that movie framed the motto as something for Lois to laugh at. She literally says, You're gonna end up fighting every elected official in this country. She's so fucking based. Oh my God, I love Margot Kidder. Now, I don't think it's fair to say that the John Byrne run is solely to blame for people thinking that Superman sucked. I think it was a lot of different factors, including some of the ones I mentioned before, but also also the craziness of the Silver Age stories, changing societal values, and even the Batman boom of 1989 that turned Batman into the face of DC and completely overshadowed Superman. But the John Byrne run had such a lasting impact on not only Superman in the comics, but also influenced how the character was treated in other media like movies and TV shows. And we're still feeling that even to this day, for better or for worse. For nearly 20 years, this was the definitive Superman story for new readers. Now instead of truth, justice, in the American way being a thing that's framed as Clark's naivety, it became a defining staple for the character. People who have never read a comic book in their lives started going on cable news and using that as ammunition for their propaganda and their grifting. Every single major adaptation took these ideas and just ran with them. And not to mention hugely iconic comics like The Dark Knight Returns poking fun at that and leaning even further into it around the same time. Leading to millions and millions of people thinking that this is all the character could ever be and completely erasing the concept of the champion of the oppressed. Also, John Byrne is like a huge transphobe and he made Superman make out with a 14 year old Lana Lang for some reason. Trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. I guess I could have led with that would have saved me a bit of time on this section. Okay, so what does this all have to do with My Adventures with Superman? I promise all that Byrne shit talking has a point, don't worry. In a lot of ways, My Adventures with Superman is kind of the anti-John Byrne Superman. The main plot of the season is Clark specifically reconnecting with his Kryptonian side. As a child, he pushed it away, literally buried it, and now he's facing the consequences for that. It was a mistake that cost him time with his father, something that he's not able to get back, which is a really interesting change to the mythos that I actually really love. And he's trying not to make that same mistake with Kara. And in a way, it still does that angle of the champion of the oppressed. The show doesn't have Clark fighting landlords or anything, but we see him connecting specifically with people on the ground that otherwise would get ignored. When a child's father goes missing inside of a prison, Superman is the only one who's willing to hear him and help him. He's literally fighting a section of the US government as the main villain. This whole plot with Task Force X and Amanda Waller, how she's taking non-violent offenders from prison to experiment on them, is as far from truth, justice, in the American way as you could possibly get, and that's rad. Like, this is literally the plot to, like, my dream Green Arrow story. Oh my god, I would kill for a Green Arrow show, like, in the same style. These things aren't main draws for the show or anything, but they're small changes to how the characters handled that are making a huge difference. Especially for something like this, which is appealing to not just comic book fans or pre-existing Superman fans, but instead to a wider audience. Turns out the secret to fixing Superman's reputation? Turning it into a shonen anime. 
Who would have guessed? But seriously, a mainstream anime with solid animation and great characters is like an absolute goldmine. It's a show that's for all ages, able to be enjoyed by adults and kids alike without ever feeling like one demographic is missing out. It's very much like Avatar The Last Airbender in that way. Because of that, I think it's going to have a strong following for a really long time. And it does all this while still having a deep love for the Superman character and everything that made his Golden Age stories so special. I'm someone that's a strong believer in character first storytelling. A movie or show could have the most garbage, derivative, bullshit plot, and it won't be a problem for me if they make me fall in love with the characters. But on the flip side, it could have the most airtight, amazing plot ever with no plot holes and a super original, and that means jack shit if the characters are boring to me. Seriously, life is so much better when you realize that like most movies are just copies of other movies and the thing that makes them interesting is story and theme and character. That's not to say that my adventures with Superman has a bad plot. Like I said, I'm really loving where they're going with this new season specifically. But for the entirety of season one, the reason I kept coming back was solely because of how much I loved these characters. I loved seeing the relationship between Clark and Lois develop. I loved watching Clark slowly uncover more and more truths about himself and grow more confident with who he is. Hell, I even love the YouTuber stuff with Jimmy. Seriously, Seriously, that could have been so annoying and they made it work. When you think about it, it's actually kind of like a modern day Christopher Reeve movie. Something that's not necessarily perfect, but it's carried by its characters and its performances and its charm that appeals to a wider audience and that's why it's so beloved. TV and comics are similar in that they're both serialized ways of telling a story. And that format, more so than movies, desperately needs the audience to care about who they're watching. And so for something like My Adventures with Superman, the fact that it's able to nail these characters so perfectly is a huge reason why it's so popular. Even if you hate the show, even if you think that I'm an idiot and John Byrne Superman is the best and only version of the character, you have to give this show credit for at least one thing. At the end of the day, this show made a whole new generation of people actually like Superman. And that's something that I think we really needed. Now, Adult Swim, hear me out. My adventures with Green Arrow. That's a million dollar idea right there. You can have it for free. But let me know down below what you think of the new season of My Adventures with Superman. Sorry, this is kind of a shorter video. Uh, I'm working on some big stuff for the next few months that I'm really excited about. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, be sure to let the YouTube algorithm know and hit the like button and subscribe. Special thanks to Anne's, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy, Carol Ann Brenneman, Chicken McDoofus, Cook C, Cosmic Tragedy, Danny Boy, Deco PY, Dreamer Who, Eden Kenna, Egan McFarlane, Hannah C, Howard Bell, Iron Ninja, Jake Sella, Jumpman Morrow, Corey's Not Fresh, Glassbird Productions, Morpy, Murno9, Popcorn Eater123, Sherbazil, Spectacular Clyde, TDW Fan, Theo Crouch, Tim Newfeld, Trans Huntress, Choices by Razor's Lame, Tyler Goodrich, and Yash Kapoor for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This is Metroid Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you around.